Professor Edward Yang to talk about the resubmitting proposal that were submitted to RGC before. Thank you. Uh, I'm Edward Young, uh, current chair of the uh, Collaborative Research Fund Committee, uh, but I, I chaired the Physical Sciences panel some years ago. So resubmissions, um, of course you get the bad news that uh, your project was not funded and you have to decide whether to resubmit or not. And there seems to be some confusion out there, uh, at least in some people's mind, what submission is. Now it does tax the system because it, the same proposal uh, over and over again, uh, we have to spend reviewer time and we have to spend energy and resources to accommodate uh, your request to evaluate the proposal. Uh, and also, uh, there are some, some people think that maybe uh, the decision on the, on the proposal, funding or not funding, is based on luck. So what they try to do is basically submit essentially the same package doesn't involve any more work, to the same panel year over year and hope that you get a different set of first reader, second reader, and external reviewers and hope to go through. Now that really doesn't work uh, because there is some corporate memory and also there's also checks for uh, things that have been uh, done in the past, titles, abstracts, and so forth. So resubmissions have, to, first of all, have to be re uh, declared. Now, uh, there are boxes in the submission uh, package that you mark either as a new proposal, resubmission, or continuation. And those have to be very, very clearly marked and correct. Um, now, what is, we know what a new proposal is. I uh, never seen it before, it, you, you all know that. But what constitutes a renewal proposal? Well, uh, there are some cases that are very obvious. For example, proposals that are not successful one round that you polish up or not polish up and put it back in the same panel that obviously is a resubmission. But there are some more subtle cases. For example, if you are co-I uh, and you submit the proposal the next round as a PI, now that is even though there's a change in PR, that is a resubmission because it's the content that's uh, not new. It's not the people that. So, uh, and some people just change the title. And again, it's not the title, it's the content, the intent, the objectives, and the, and the, and the uh, way that the, the project's been carried out. So that's, that's the resubmission. I wanted to be very careful about that um, when you're marking those boxes. Of course, continuation is different. It is a project that has already been funded and you are expanding or redirecting a project and uh, asking for money to do some new things. Not the same thing, but new things. All right, so that uh, um, has to be clearly identified. Um, so, what do you do or what should you do uh, in the resubmission? Uh, of course, the most important thing is to uh, address the comments that were made before by the previous round of review. And these are, we call them the pink sheets, but of course you don't see the color, but these are the comments that come back for proposals that are fundable but not funded or, and so forth. Uh, it's important to address those comments because those are really considered comments they are by external experts or readers that have gone through your proposal very carefully. So you have to uh, take them uh, seriously. Of course, there are cases where some sentences got misread or some part of your proposal got misread or some preliminary results were not included and so forth. And those are easy things to uh, address. But you have to basically have a section in your proposal quoting the previous critique and then addressing them correctly. Now that not only saves time on the next round of review, but also actually helps your proposal because people will understand why the proposal was not funded before and therefore uh, uh, if those are all correctly addressed or if it was simply misunderstood in the previous round for some reason, uh, then you may have a better chance of getting through in this round. Um, and make sure that your pro resubmission has major changes, not just changing one or two sentences or semantics or changing paragraphs or changing view graphs uh, and so on. Uh, and also since the submission is going to be a year 
after the first submission, make sure you include new references because certainly in your field, in one year, uh, there has been other advances in science. And when reviewers read these resubmissions and if the citations are still one year ago, they know that you have not put much thought into your resubmission and therefore uh, would not take your resubmission uh, seriously. So that's very important. Uh, the best way is to include new uh, experimental results if it's an experimental project or new preliminary results if you have a study because that really gives uh, uh, more, more meat uh, to the proposal and more justification for the new round of review to change their minds of going from a 4 to 4.5, for example. And of course, during this one year, you might have come up with new ideas and you should really specify uh, to say that this is something that was not in the previous proposal uh, and this is a cha major change made and that helps uh, everyone. So it should be very clear. Now, during the review of these uh, new proposals, uh, um, there's no bias. It does not automatically go back to the same set of reviewers, uh, readers, I mean. Um, it may be totally new or may be exactly the same. So uh, that's up to the sign of the panel chair see what is appropriate. Um, so after that, of course, the readers may send back, that back out, may send it back out to the same set of external reviewers or may not. I usually, if I'm first reader, I usually send it out to, in addition, send out to some other reviewers in case the first set of external reviewers uh, are not the appropriate people to review. So I think the system is very fair. You would not get the same people with a bias from the last round, particularly if you have made major modifications uh, to your proposal. Um, however, do not expect the score to improve, even though you have done all of this, uh, clarification, new ideas, and new results, and so forth, because you are competing with the other set of proposals in that round. And uh, so proposals that have even major changes may still st stay at the same level and fundable but not funded. Uh, that's unfortunate because you're just not competitive. And, and after one or two tries, uh, I think um, you might really want to try to put in some very, very different proposal than before. Um, to give you some perspective, the National Institutes of Health uh, procedure for funding proposals because of their uh, uh, t time frame also. When you submit a proposal, the earliest you can submit a, a um, uh, resubmission, given the time of review and feedback and then the schedule, is, is probably more, th is somewhere between one and a half to two years. Now here in Hong Kong, you can do it in the next round. So you get your results in July, your comments in July, you can resubmit in November. And so uh, that's actually very, very good for, uh, for the for folks here. And, and that's something we envy in the United States. We don't have to wait so long because um, uh, it's, it's hard to wait 15 months. Also in National Institute of Health, you can only resubmit twice. After that, you cannot resubmit at all, no matter how you improve. And, and therefore, the, uh, here we don't have any restrictions on that. However, you also should get the hint that after once or twice that it's not going to improve anymore. All right, so those are my general thoughts on resubmission. Um, and I hope that uh, you all be successful the first time so you don't have to resubmit. Thank you, Professor Yam.